In this video, we're going to look at some of the recent updates to VS Code. There were some great improvements. And if you want to learn more about VS Code, check out my VS Code course at vscodehero.com. The link is in the description below. And if you find this video helpful, like and subscribe. Have you ever cloned a repository and been a little paranoid about the code that was in it? There's so many open source projects out there, but how do we know that we can trust this code? Blindly using code comes with the risk of malicious code executing on your computer. VS Code now has something called Workspace Trust. This will allow us to restrict the access that we grant random code. After this latest update, when you open a folder in VS Code, you'll be prompted to choose whether you trust this source. And if you trust it, everything will work as it should. If you choose to enter restricted mode, tasks will be disabled, debugging will be disabled, some settings may not be applied, and some extensions may be disabled or have limited functionality. So restricted mode will try to prevent code execution, whether intentionally or automatically in the background. And when you're in restricted mode, you're gonna see this banner at the top of the window and a badge in the bottom left of the status bar reminding you that you don't trust this code. Now, if you clone a repository and open it in restricted mode, but then decide that you're okay with the code, you can go back to the Workspace Trust settings from the Manage Gear in the Activity Bar, or from the Command Palette, or from the banner at the top. You can also set up folders on your computer that are always trusted. Just add any folder here. This way you won't be prompted every time that you open a project from that folder. And if you want to be wild and just trust everything, you can disable Workspace Trust from the settings. Just search for security.workspace.trust. The getting started experience was refreshed a couple of updates ago, but with this update, the new welcome page will be enabled by default for all users. With this update, you're going to get walkthroughs for basic VS Code functionality, and now extensions can even add a walkthrough to this getting started page. Luna Paint, for instance, has a walkthrough included. There's a new extension called Remote Repositories. It will allow you to quickly browse, search, edit, and commit to any GitHub repo without cloning or downloading anything. It connects directly to GitHub. Just go to the Extensions tab and install it. Now at the bottom left, you're gonna see a new remote button that will open a new remote window. Click that and choose Open Remote Repository. Now I'm gonna open the markdown file from my free developer resources repo. Notice now at the bottom left that it says GitHub. This is telling us that we're using a virtual file system and not viewing files from our local system. Let's change this to awesome free developer resources. Now we can go to the source control tab, add a commit message, and we're done. It has changed it on GitHub. Now not everything will work. Anything that requires a CLI like some extensions will not function, but basic IntelliSense will still work. We also won't be able to run any code locally. If you do need to make more advanced changes, you can again click the bottom left button and choose continue working on, and then you can clone locally or open in code spaces, which by the way, GitHub, I've been on the list forever. Come on. So this is a really cool extension and it's great if you just wanna make simple changes, especially to update markdown files, or if you just wanna quickly look through a repo, it's easier to navigate through it in VS Code instead of from the GitHub website. There's a new setting that will allow you to preview the selected suggestion or snippet at the current cursor position. This is not enabled by default, so if you want to use this, go into settings and search for suggestion preview and enable it. We now have terminal tabs. It will only look different when you have at least two terminals open. This also allows you to see the status of tasks. You can see if a task is running, succeeded, or failed. Well, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you liked some of these updates, like this video to help me out, and subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this.